2019 in Atlanta, uh, we did this, we did it again, uh, similar thing, and had it hybrid. Then in 2020, they canceled the conference in Denver, I believe that year. Was, is that right? Anyway, uh, yes. but we, the Electronic Village Online, gave the presentation anyway, online, at about the time that it would actually have happened in Denver had it uh, had it been then. So, so we, we were the, uh, I think we had an event later for that. But, uh, and then last year, uh, we didn't, oh, there was a virtual conference last year as well. So, and we were uh, part of that. So basically this is, we've done this often before and uh, we are, uh, Jane and I are going to talk about EDO Minecraft MOOC. And that's our session, the EDO. Uh, we've been doing this for eight years now. This is our eighth year in, we started in 2015. And uh, this year we have, let me see if I can move this uh, little window here. Okay, so we have, uh, I'm the lead moderator of the EVO Minecraft MOOC since 2015. And Aaron Schwartz is one of, the, all the co-moderators uh, co are listed here. Aaron Schwartz handles the back end. He does the, he, he keeps the server running. He has possibly the hardest job I would think, or is the toughest. Barbara Stevens, my wife, uh, is uh, co-moderating with us this year. Katrina Maria, all these are in alphabetical order, by the way. And Katrina is someone who uh, was so prominent last year that we asked her to be a moderator this year. She's very uh, personable and uh, uh, is, is learning. He's learning and is therefore a good model for uh, other participants. And then Heike Philp, who is also co-moderating the uh, Building in Virtual World session. And she'll, she'll be talking later, but she, she was a part of this one. She might have a word to say uh, at some point, and then Jane Xian and Matty Tsai, who is her son. So we encourage people to bring their children. And uh, we have lots of young people joining us. We learn from them. Uh, and Jeff Kuhn, who uh, he and I wrote an article in, uh, I can't, anyway, so there's a last slide here that shows some references. It's Kuhn and Stevens, and it's about participatory cultures. And then we also, have Dakota Redstone and Olive Tree Lighthouse, who, um, uh, okay, yeah, who uh, were moderators in the past, but are not really operating in moderator capacity, except that they really are de facto moderators, and we really appreciate their uh, work. The links at the bottom of this, these slides will work, so at some point we need to give you the, uh, the link to the slideshow, the slide presentation, and so that you could uh, hit those links. But, We'll distribute that at some point. Okay, uh, so there's Bobby and Heike, my wife, Bobby Bear. That's what she looks like in actual fact. She has no avatar, she is an avatar. And uh, uh, why did you include this slide, Jane? Yeah, this is our op uh, like opening event. Um, we always started with an opening event and um, uh, Dakota built an area and invited us for a fish fry event on um, social events so that we can get together um, and um, uh, know each other um, to start off the EVO Minecraft MOOC. Yeah. And okay. Next slide. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, this, this is we're fishing um, and mm -hmm. These are the people who attended and, and um, we really enjoy getting together and fishing and um, learning how to, uh, you know, uh, put our fish in a campfire and yeah, get it cooked. Next. Yeah, this is an, a good example of language activity because uh, some people don't know how to fish. You have to get them fishing poles or teach them how to make them and then you explain how to fish, how to throw. You can see the lower right, there's a fishing rod. You throw that into the water, you catch fish, and you can take that fish back to uh, where we were a moment ago and cook it. It's just an activity that uh, is kind of like the old uh, moves, the multi-object virtual environments that we used to habitate, except that these, uh, this one is richer in many ways. And then of course, um, 
the immersive worlds that Doris and Heike are talking about are intensively, uh, well, immersive. So, and this also has lots of language activity, which we'll talk about. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then um, because we're communicating through uh, Discord <clears throat> and there are a lot of uh, participants um, we have, yeah. And so um, also we have like young learners uh, who were there Oops. joining us and, and um, we were actually talking over each other and, you know, um, um, we had a discussion on um, how, how do we, um, uh, how do we communicate through discord uh, when it's in a, like a crowd, when it's a crowd like this and um, having conversations on um, the online voice communication etiquette and that's something that we ought to teach our young learners as well. So that's a lesson learned through the event. Yes. Again, it's a point of discussion and for language learners. Uh, it's, it's a real topic that, uh, that you can discuss with your learners. And um, in this particular case, the kids who, were, they were just unaware that they were being distracting, but once they figured that out, they uh, became very polite and uh, reasonable after that. And what were they distracting us about? They were <laughs> having us all ride around on these uh, striders. This is something that they, they, they get from the netherworld. They brought them up from the netherworld. You can only find them in the netherworld, or if you join EVO Minecraft book, you might find them just about anywhere. But uh, anyway, they brought these up and uh, showed us how to ride them. Uh, to ride them, you have to carry a warped mushroom uh, in on that stick and that makes it that makes the strider go you can also ride horses in minecraft but striders are kind of interesting yeah okay anything else about that jane mm, perhaps the next slide okay yeah and um actually maddie put together this uh strider riding and he um he left us a note and this is the note he uh he, he uh, had written, uh, hi there, hey there, man, <laughs> want to get a ride? Introducing the uh, rideable freezing blocks. Um, yeah, you just take a warped fungus on stick and rent one, it's free. Just don't let them perish into white smoke, Maddie. And um, so Maddie and I are based in Taipei, Taiwan. And, and so English is to us is a foreign language and to Maddie as well. And um, um, he has learned so much uh, by, by participating in this community and me as his mom observing how his language develops uh, over the years um, and, and is doc was documented by advanced, uh, you know, over these years from he was very young, like at the age of four, you could really see um, his uh, progress in, in terms of um, speaking, communicating, and finally he's able to write something and type it up something. And um, although you still notice that, uh, you know, he still needs some work on the writing conventions, but um, I'm, I'm really glad um, that about this platform, Minecraft MOOC, um, um, engaging in learners and also educators, we, um, and, um, you know, so uh, we get to know um, how, how learners learn in this Minecraft uh, world. Yes. Yeah, uh, the last slide is references. And Jane's article that she wrote in Tessaly J about uh, vocabulary development uh, using Maddie and a few of his friends in Minecraft is there. And um, also uh, last year we put together we had, uh, I made transcriptions of a discussion that we had at one of the uh, Best of EVO events. And that was very revealing about what people are learning. For example, typing skills, um, accents. I never thought of that, but they learn accents from one another, uh, which uh, just never seems to come up in other contexts. So, okay, what's next? Mm -hmm. Oh, and um, we really enjoy building and Dakota uh, loves building extravagant um, 
uh, things like this um, pyramid and uh, we were having fun around it. Um, yeah. Yeah. We have a dynamic map. Uh, we're not going to show it to you here, but uh, we can find these places on our map and we can see the relationships to the various places and we can see. Uh, so we often uh, go to Dakota's Pyramid because um, it's a neat place to hang out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And who built this? And um, Maddie, um, when he was in fourth grade, um, I took him to visit the Statue of Liberty. And uh, what's nice about Minecraft is kids get to build uh, what, you know, what they encounter and what, you know, in the real life and, and go through like the, some of the histories. And um, when he showed this build to his friends, his friends was asking, why isn't it a green? And, you know, so he sort of had to explain to, to his friends. And this is like, um, um, a great example of how you could uh, carry on a conversation and go into details um, of, uh, uh, of something um, um, in a real world and, you know, because of the Minecraft build uh, by the learners. Yep. Okay, I just checked the chat. I don't see any questions there. I don't know if I told people, We're, we have a well-behaved audience, but uh, we appreciate if you stay muted. And if uh, only the presenters have their uh, screen, have their videos on, that's uh, standard, going to be standard for all the best of EDO events. And if you have a question, you can put it in the text chat and put a cue in front of it. And that will alert Doris, who's monitoring that, that you have a question. And we're 15 minutes into our presentation. So we have another half hour for our part of it. But of course, we don't want to be talking the whole time, but we, we'd like to leave. If you have any questions, we're going to leave a little time for that. Uh, by 6.30, we're going to hand over to uh, Doris and Heike. Okay, let's see. The next slide, a game we all played. Yeah, um, and this is, so So Maddie is the, the tech person in, you know, Minecraft. He has the, the skills of, of you know, a building a mini game, you know, and setting up something like this. This is the uh, uh, year of the tiger and he's set up a, a mini game for us to play like each year, every year. Um, it, this involves redstone, which I don't know much about it. Um, so I, I, he learns the language from the community um, by communicating with us um, and um, I learned the uh, building techniques, the redstones and all that from him. Yeah. Yeah, again, another example of uh, how you interact with students about real topics, things of interest to both of you. Uh, you're the teacher, but suddenly you're the learner. They're the teachers. And that's uh, one interesting thing that, that Minecraft does, I think. Okay, so now it's time for me to talk a little bit. Um, I've patterned EVO Minecraft MOOC on Dave Cormier's video, which you can, Five Steps to Succeed in a MOOC. And by the way, MOOC, as far as I'm concerned, stands for Minuscule Open Online Course. The <laughs> principles for a Minuscule Open Online Course are the same as for a massive open online course, except there are few, fewer people. But the principles are pretty much the same as it happens this way year after year. The first week, people orient because MOOCs are confusing by definition. So people have to figure out what's the lay of the land here? Where am I? How, how do I uh, communicate? So we give people a week to do that. And then the second week, uh, declare, that's where Dave says that people can start uh, explaining who they are and why they're there. And the third week is network. People start networking. They start, we start sharing networks. For example, we had uh, VSTE, Virginia Society for Teaching and Education, uh, Technology and Education. Yeah. Okay. And uh, VSTE has a Minecraft MOOC every uh, month, once a month, the first Monday in every month, I believe, Minecraft Monday. And uh, so we made them part of our uh, first ever Minecraft one day conference on language learning. And um, people in MOOCs, after the third week, they start networking, but then we find out we are in different time zones and people with like interests start clustering together. And five is really where you focus, but it could 
it extends into after the uh, uh, after the MOOC. So I'm not sure if I click this, what will happen? Let's see. This is the uh, this is our conference site. It's uh, um, let's see. Okay, so this this uh, let's see if I can go down to find the. Oh, that's the. Oh, I'm not sure. Okay. I'm, Oh, here we go. There we go. So this this is our uh, announcement for the conference, and uh, it happened on February eighth. And you can find out everything that happened here, including all the recordings. So we're going to talk a little bit about what happened at the conference, and because this is a really unique event. Uh, okay, if I hit, how do I get out of here? Let's see if I go back. What will happen? No. Um, how do I close that? No, that doesn't work either. Maybe I should. Oh, okay. So I stopped the share kind of inadvertently. I'll come back here. Let's see, I'll start the share again. And uh, so I'm going to have to clean up here. Um, I don't see the. Oh, my goodness. I think I've closed everything. Oh, okay. Um, I can share yeah, mine. Yeah, yeah. You, you go ahead and share. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, we have a backup. Let, okay. If you can take it from Dave's slide and you can go on to the next one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me. Excellent. You see how we work together? We all collaborate. So, yeah, you come down to. Slide. How's that? Uh, 10. No, you need to go. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So, that's the. All the. I just showed you uh, all the. Events were recorded. I'm not going to click that link, but that takes you to this blog post. And that blog post has all the recordings listed there. And you just click on them and you can you can see them. So they're either in YouTube or they're in Facebook. All right. You want to move on, Jane? I mean, uh, 20 minutes after the hour. Okay. okay. Sorry. Yeah. This is the first one there was James York's presentation. Uh, he didn't actually do a presentation. He just held a discussion. You can see on the left there, part of our dynamic map, you can see where we're sitting in this uh, in uh, sort of a, a compound. We're sitting around a table, which Dakota made for us very quickly. At some point, we started standing on each other's heads. We got tired of sitting around the table. And basically, we had a discussion about um, uh, what's the language benefit from Minecraft and how easy is it to implement? And let's hold that question because we'll come back to it in a second. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go over to Walton's presentation. Mm -hmm. Walton showed us how he creates scripts for activities which will help him to communicate with students in Minecraft. So he sets up tasks for them, they do the tasks and he's got scripts which re keep track of their progress. And that's his pagoda, which he built uh, in order to house his presentation. Okay, do you want to go to the next one? Okay, so this is Robert and Robert, Kuma Rob, and it's one of the Roberts. They're, they're from Japan. Mm -hmm. What they did was they uh, they built this, this area, which actually they didn't build it like this. Dakota came along and he filled in the ceiling and all the decorated it quite a bit, which is another really interesting aspect of Minecraft. Everyone's a builder, everyone's a creator. Mm -hmm. uh, again, you can click on that YouTube link and you can see their presentation, mm -hmm. but they were meaning to have us write in books. They had a wall over here to the left. You can't see the wall, but there's a wall there where we uh, posted ideas for how they could run their resource center. They had a, a resource center and they were trying to integrate Minecraft into it. How can they do that? How could they get? How could they use Minecraft to get uh, Japanese language learners to, um, you know, open up with language? Yep. So we all posted over there. Mm -hmm. And the, yeah, this is they they use Minecraft as a platform for self learning as a self learning center for uh, college students and yes. have monthly uh, build challenges for them too. Yeah. Okay. And we. Okay. Yeah. And then I don't know if Heike is here. She could say something about her presentations. Uh, she talked about Excalibur. Chris Binder talked about MindTest, which is a free open source uh, Minecraft kind of like environment that 
it, it's very interesting because it's open it's source. Open source. Open exactly. source. It's and, free. Yeah. And then Andrea Benassi. That's if I can just come back to James's question. What are people doing in Minecraft to um, to help language learners? Practically speaking, uh, Andrea works in Italian schools, and he had many examples. So he pretty much answered that question. So Heiko, if you could take just a few minutes to. Uh, I actually, you said most of it already, so that's perfectly <laughs> okay. Um, the presentations are have been very fascinating. And Andrea Bennassi works for Indire, which is the Italian research organization. They do a lot of piloting in schools and they are quite ahead of time uh, with regards to in the European field. Uh, it's a great privilege to be able to work with them. And uh, Indire is uh, once again, oh, well, Ewell is once again a project partner in Excalibur. Excalibur is a project that is about to start, which will take two years. It has received funding to develop expertise for teachers on how to use this environment to uh, facilitate language learning and to encourage the students to build, if possible, uh, with the sustainable goals in mind, yeah? So this is the, uh, the long, long Excalibur acronym of things. And uh, so, but this is, as I said, uh, it's just about to start and uh, takes two years. And uh, then we had uh, Chris Binder explain about MindTest. And MindTest is a beautiful alternative for those who cannot afford the Java version of Minecraft and who cannot use the Minecraft version of Microsoft, which is also free for if you have the office suit. So it's, it's for, for those out there in the field who are left without any alternatives. MindTest and their Blockalot administration tool is a great tool for teachers to um, have students join the space to build without and also with security concerns, uh, very easy and free. And that's it from, from my side, yeah. Okay, thank you. Block a lot helps you make maps. So it uh, looks like Jane's going to tackle the question of why Minecraft at school. She didn't answer it here on no, no. this slide. She'll answer it now. Oh, no, no, this is um, oh. Oh, This Andrea. is from Andrea's, Andrea's yeah. presentation. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, on the link, on Heike's slide, there's a link to all three presentations all together in one YouTube video, but each of the presentations is also split into its own. So if you go to the blog post that we showed you, you can, that's learning together, learningtogether.net. If you go there, uh, that's one of the most recent posts. So you can play all of the, you can, you can uh, get all of the videos. And the, the one day conference in Minecraft, it's a first, because um, I, you know we've been doing a lot of virtual conferences lately, especially with TESOL, but uh, and it's a conference on language learning. But this is a conference in Minecraft about language learning. It's the first that we're aware. I keep saying this; nobody's challenged me on it. So I think it's the first time anybody has set up a uh, a conference on language learning in Minecraft, and so it's interesting in that respect. Okay. So now this is so, uh, Jane's presentation. Um, I, I, so I did a presentation on an, an analysis of Minecraft activities for language learning. Um, but I, I think this is the slide I would like to emphasize. Um, so as we observe like Maddie, you know, learner, young learners um, participate in a Minecraft world for language learning, um, we look at their language competence. They, you know, Maddie started uh, low in this area, this area, um, and with low language competence, not, not being able to speak much uh, English, uh, but being able to listen and comprehend what others, others were um, saying. Um, and also the uh, Minecraft skills, okay, this, this part would, would be Minecraft skills would be low Minecraft skills and low uh, language competence. And then as time moves on and keeps on playing and communicating in this um, 
uh, on our server, interacting with um, 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 people, you know, uh, Emmanuel from Brazil and also um, um, who else was, I forgot her name, um, based in Europe. And there were, um, so his language, he is able to, uh, you know, communicate in English more and his Minecraft skills advances. And right now he's here in, uh, in this area where he could build game, mini games and, you know, um, you know, do role plays, narrative storytelling uh, with, um, you know, high Minecraft skills and high language competence. And for teachers, all we need is start from here. Um, we have high, um, language competence, we're you know, native speakers or, you know, and then we need the Minecraft skills um, from this area and moves on to the, um, this area. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the purpose of EBO Minecraft book. And by the way, we have two minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so yes, excellent. Okay, so uh, the purpose of EBO Minecraft book, which should probably have been said at the very beginning is to give teachers experience in Minecraft and help us learn from each other and be models for each other. And it's just in time learning. We tried setting up little tutorials along the way. We've, we've been doing this for eight years, but I just personally gave up on that. Uh, it's best just to get people into the world. If, if people aren't going to come into the world anyway, they're, they're just not going to learn it. And I know Doris will have a lot to say about that because she skillfully brings people into her uh, into her second metaverse. Link. Yeah, first. into second uh, open sim actually. Okay. Now, this, these references uh, that first article I mentioned that Jane had an article in Tessaly J. So that's. Uh, research she did on language development. Kuhn and Stevens is the second one down here. And uh, the next to the bottom, which is Stevens 2021, March 27th, that has lots of examples of how, uh, of what we said, that's a, a transcript of a conversation that we had at the last TESOL conference. And there's also a page of more articles at the Pedagogy of Minecraft uh, link at the very bottom of this slide. And I think I'm going to put the link to the slides in the uh, text chat once I get off the stage. Is there any, there's one more slide. Yes, thank you very much for attending our presentation. And it looks like we're turning over to Heike and Doris just in time. Mm -hmm. So we'll let them introduce their session. Please keep your uh, microphones muted. Please keep your video off for us, please. And, um, if you have questions, I saw a question come in uh, a moment ago. So if I guess we'll take questions at the end if we have time. Yes. And, uh, mm -hmm. okay. and there are two questions. There is okay. one about mm -hmm. how to avoid uh, students becoming game addicted. And the next question is, uh, what is the minimum age group uh, to use Minecraft? Okay, I can, I can, the minimum age group, it's been uh, used with young children pre-literate. So uh, kids can learn how to play Minecraft at a very early age. Uh, maybe two is a little too early, three or four, surely by four, yep. by four they can do it. And as far as uh, the other question was, uh, how do we avoid addiction? Actually, we're not trying to avoid addiction. We're trying to encourage addiction to learning the language. It's, uh, that's actually, that kind of addiction constructively channeled is what makes Minecraft work for certain students. Uh, Jane mentioned the person, uh, a person that, uh, 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 and, and, Emmanuel? Like, no, no, no. Uh, Mariana Schmolchez. Is that who you were thinking oh, of? Philip. Philip, yeah. Philip, Philip Schmolchez is a, her son. And that's how we actually got started with EDO Minecraft Book. Uh, she did a study about her son's um, language development, how, flu how he became fluent by interacting with other students, because he's in Croatia. His language is Croatian. And also uh, to learn Minecraft, they had to watch videos. They didn't understand a word. And he told me when I went and visited them in Croatia that the language just emerged. So uh, it's, it's effective when kids really get uh, into the flow in Minecraft. Um, so I don't think a game addiction 
in a, itself is uh, the problem, but you want them to get into the language. Uh, you want them to get into the game so that they can use that to learn their language. Okay. All right. Well, Thank thanks. You. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I took two minutes of your time. <laughs> okay, hey, K, now it's your turn. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, this, uh, I can just encourage you to look at the uh, conference, the Minecraft MOOC conference, the one day conference, because what's been put together here is very, very unique. And we thank Vance very much for organizing this. So wonderful to lead. And I'm happy to start my presentation on uh, the uh, immersive storytelling, uh, immersive building. Immersive storytelling was last year. <laughs> okay. Um, also have the chat open. Feel free to ask questions and I'm just about to send. Um, Jane, if you could check out the links that I just sent you in private chat, if you could paste them bit by bit into the public chat, if that's okay, as we're going through. Thank you so much. So Best of Eva, a really great privilege to be hybrid virtual in Pittsburgh. Sorry, that was uh, first slide, so exact. Thank you very much for inviting us. We've been really proud to conduct the immersive building in virtual worlds and virtual reality. And I'm, thank you, Mastoda. And I'm going to show you some really, really great examples of new 3D software that has blown our minds and that are officially classed virtual reality, but that offer teachers the possibility to build a 3D environment within minutes and to encourage the students to join in seconds and encourage the students to build in the 3D environments within 10 minutes. It's absolutely incredible. And I'm so proud that this fantastic team of moderators that you see in front of us has joined. Uh, it's been 10, we've been 10 moderators and one co-moderator who especially showed us a specific platform and so we looked at a number of solutions in the five weeks, uh, which was attended to by 150 participants, uh, very exciting. And uh, I mentioned before that the expression virtual worlds and virtual reality, which we chose, immersive building in virtual worlds and virtual reality. Last summer, when we proposed the session, this was the state. In the autumn, it was called the metaverse. So we could, <laughs> we could proudly uh, sort of um, show that we've been looking at the metaverse here. So we went into OpenSim, kindly. OpenSim is similar to Second Life, very good building uh, possibilities. Frame VR IO, which is the one I'm very excited about. Mozilla Hub's fantastic open source again, all space VR. These were the four solutions that we looked at. Hi, Ashvan. Welcome to the session. Um, in OpenSim, we already established a beautiful foursim island with great uh, excitement. Last year, we built on it. And this year, we said, here's the plot of land. Let's build Edunation Village. <laughs> and this is what it looked like afterwards. I'm not sure whether it's very small. Obviously, it's a, an eye, a bird's eye perspective here. But if you go to Kitely, and everybody can go at any time, you will see here a huge workshop on how to build idioms in OpenSim. So we conducted general building workshops. Idioms building workshops, which is so fun because you can, with a few elements, you can build these, you know, the lame duck eye icon sort of thing, or who has the cut, got your tongue and, and things like, really great idioms, um, amazing array of idioms. And um, then we did this building workshop in FrameVR, sorry, alt space as well, Mozilla Hubs. And now we have a new location for Edunation. So Edunation, 
Agination is the name of the uh, the two islands that uh, we run in Second Life. And now the new island in, in Kitely, another four islands in Kitely, are also called Agination. So if you Google Agination, this is also something where you find. What, what I would like to point you to is the V Languages PV Works. So if we could perhaps, uh, Jane, if you could put this in the chat. Because in a, on this site, that wiki is where we collect all of the information about language learning and virtual worlds that have been, we've been around and doing this for 15 years. That includes all the number of EU funded projects, but that also includes the conferences we conducted in the past. And we are now part of virtual world best practice in education, a, a language strand of that big, big, bigger conference and um, also the uh, EVO sessions, everything. So um, we're going to go to the V Languages Wiki in a minute. I would like to, sorry, not to thank you, but I would like to change over to this one because I would like to show you the beautiful results. And I'm going to show live some of these results. So this is the Wiki, V Languages Wiki. Thank you, Aisha. And here you will find on the homepage, on the front, you'll find the immersive building session as we conducted it and the beautiful results. So you'll find that here is the name of the person who conducted the session. Uh, sorry, who, who produced the results. Sorry, we conducted the building workshops, but our participants created with these environments amazing sites and so Christiana Pivetta was one of the participants thank you so much yeah we can do that actually it's a good point so um I can share that one like this now great asking because I didn't give this to Jane I forgot about this one so you're welcome. So Christiana Pivada was participant of the work of the EVA session and she started to build in iframe VR. And she was so excited. She is a very master builder in other environments and she uses Blender. And what she did, she created a specific building in Blender and then imported this in iframe. So let's look quickly at her sites. And here is the Museum Dante and the Domus Romana. And Mohammed, you have a question. Would you like to put the question in text chat and I'll address it same time. So do you see iframe build up? Okay, this is the environment. All I do is I put my name in here. I type Heike. I click on connect and this is how easy your students can go in. So permit this to build up. It's the, the space that she used here is the uh, so-called gallery space. And what she built here is, is a site with information about Dante. Uh, you can, the students can walk through here. They can click on a few things. So whenever they click on it, they get information. They can read the information or they can click here to visit other rooms. We found there's no end of rooms to this iframe. Uh, everybody can use iframe, three different sites for free. iframe is produced by Verbila and Verbila itself is rather expensive and iframe has become their kind of common solution for it. It supports voice, as you can see, microphone. It supports people. So you can, with this very simple link, frame VR IO Dante, people can go there and soon start to interact. As I said, everyone can do this. And then there is, for each of the three spaces that you can get for free, you can, there's the first visitor, look at that. How quickly, <laughs> I guess this is what they look like, the avatars. 
but you can change the avatar to a human looking one. At the moment, it's a robot. He looks the other way. That's why I don't see this eyes, you know, his or her eyes. That's it from the front. Okay. So, and this guest, this is how quickly students can go in. One of the teachers, she created a site. I'll show you that again from the results page. She created a site here. This is Georgia Maneta, participant. She created a site called Frame VR the UK. So she built, and allow me to leave this quickly because I'd like to just click on the UK. As I said, it builds up in a few seconds. There's no software to be installed. No, um, uh, you, can, you can easily build there. I'll show you in a minute the samples of students, what they did. It's, it's not, not that they can just go there and walk in. Allow it to build up. And as you can see, everything about the UK. There's information, there's poems, there's videos. You can embed, yes. Dipti, it's free. <laughs> you can put in objects like the Big Ben, you know, here, who is she? Then when you click on it, you get links to websites so that students can check this out. Absolutely stunning. We, we were blown away, to be honest. And this is the technology I have been waiting for for 15 years, 15 years. So, but I'll talk you through because iframe is one really, really great discovery that we made. Thanks to Jennifer, by the way. And here we have Jennifer's side. Jennifer, uh, one of the moderators, she gave a workshop and she invited us all into this iframe. And look at that. The amazing thing is that we as participants, when we joined her session, as I said, within 10 minutes, we were able to res 3D objects that this Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> you know, somebody, Peter just says Winnie the Pooh. Or here, this person added a picture. Is yeah, iframe is free. You get three iframes for free, and you can take 15 students in the space. And there is a lot of, as you can see here, it's blue or at the top, there's this gallery. These are the so-called templates you can use. There's a ton of templates. They include outdoor spaces, beaches, islands. They include exhibition spaces like these ones here. They include um, free sitting areas. So the, the, the background, basically the, the spaces, the environments, yeah. Uh, there are tons of templates, every one of the three free frames that you get, so they're called frames, every one of these frames um, can have up to 12 rooms <laughs> and even more. We, we, we stopped at 12. We've, we thought it's endless even that you can have rooms. So you can take your students from room to room and different rooms for different purposes, like what? Uh, uh, breakout rooms, as it were. <laughs> An online Easter egg hunt, Mirella. What a great idea. So, and here I wanted to show you this picture of Helen or Karelia. Some of us know her, Helen Myers. She raised this frog. She was in the space 10 minutes. And that was so stunning for us. I mean, really incredible. Equally good, but still a little bit. Mm, here, I would say, and a little bit not as nice graphics, I would say, is Mozilla Hubs. But Mozilla Hubs is open source, and so there's no limit to using it. So with iFrame, iFrame is a commercial solution, but no not software needed, and you only get three free. It's a bit like Padlet, you know, we get three Padlets. <laughs> Um, but here, Mozilla Hubs is completely open source. And I'd like to show you Mozilla Hubs as well. But I want to move on now. When it builds up, I, I let it build up. Um, because we created in OpenSim beautiful environments like the, the really funny Baba Yaga house. And it was so funny because this house behaved like Baba Yaga house. It was, we laughed our heads off. 
because we, we showed the, the teacher how to make the house fly by creating an invisible avatar and then putting this house on her shoulder as you were and then fly off. And when she did it, she changed the physics of the house as well. So this house behaved, Baba Yaga could believe it. It was so funny when she presented it. And beautiful other buildings here, Lucia, this tent. Uh, stunning Alicia created a whole site of a historic moment in Poland. And um, Zeynep Musavi, some of you might know as well, she created this beautiful tapestry gallery. Uh, Peter Omar created a house. Um, here's Barbara's workshops with all of the beautiful idioms that she created. Ah, you have to go. She also has amazing amount of slides for idioms. And here's the description of Eva. So if you go to vlanguagespeopleworks.com, you'll get to uh, the results of our beautiful Eva sessions. And we're so proud of what our participants have. We're so proud how much time they spent on it. And this brings me to an end and also of the, the last slide, which is this one. <laughs> so keep if, if we can just copy paste the YouTube of these. Yeah. And open for questions anytime. The same session next year. <laughs> we always expand and we always increase like look for new challenges because Evo is not only a beautiful way to invite people to learn, but it's also a fantastic way for us core moderators of these sessions to train ourselves. Uh, yeah, experiment, of course, but it's our own training set. Interestingly, isn't it? Yeah. So we love to, to teach or train this, but at the same time, we learn more. <laughs> than our participants. <laughs> As usual, Evo, it's, be encouraged to use, you know, to do Evo. Okay, but it's always, you know, a big community of educators in this uh, virtual world. So if you are interested, just contact us and we'll help you get there. And yeah, there is always next sessions next year with wonderful things to do too. So everybody's invited. Mm -hmm. And I heard next year it's going to be called Metaverse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now everything Buzzword. is Metaverse. Yeah. And uh, I need to mention that Doris did a stunning session on importing mesh. And this, just like these 3D objects, which I showed to you, these 3D objects, to import these into a virtual world like OpenSim, Doris is the absolute expert in doing that. <laughs> Elena is also here. Elena is around and she's uh, also a wonderful builder. She also has a session on building. So Elena, if you want to turn off your camera and say hello. <laughs> yes, yeah, she's also, a, she was also a moderator. She worked, you know, a lot of people um, you mean passionate Helena about Galani? this and they Helena are here. Galani? Yes, Elena is here. Yeah. She's Let me see. teaching at the same time. I think she has to. She's muted. And okay. Normally, she's teaching a full time. Oh, class. let me give her permission so she can come. Uh, oh, what is it? Yeah, there she is. I mean, I can. Uh, uh, Nelly? Yeah, I'm afraid I'm can you give for her, her too. I'm looking. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm Believe me, she's <laughs> Elena. Where I are you, Elena? I found her. I found her. Yeah. Helena's so, teaching yeah. an adult class right now. It's possible that she can't switch on webcam. She, she's she's she saying that she wants to. She Hi. says, yeah, no permission. Okay, she's, she's here. here. Oh, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> beautiful Elena you. from Greece. <laughs> yeah, and thank you so much for presenting this. It's been a fantastic experience once again this year, uh, working together with a beautiful team of colleagues moderators but also teachers from around the world i'm sorry i can't share my screen or can i i'm at the school yes, right now you can I'm do anything uh, oh yes here i am okay can you see my background wonderful <laughs> oh, it's a different location Ooh, yes. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, 
the, the end of the first part of my working day, and I'm sorry I couldn't attend earlier, uh, but uh, Heike has uh, encompassed everything really, and you've shown if some. You want, if you want to share your screen and, and we still got eight minutes, feel it, free. It's okay. it's okay, you've covered me fully, trust me. And <laughs> it was nice uh, sharing my knowledge, my skills. Uh, well, part of it anyway, teaching our colleagues about how they can script, how they can texture, how they can insert media and sound. Uh, and I'm sure there's much more to do. And when Nelly asked Heike if it's possible, if we're considering repeating the session next year, I'm sure if we repeat it, there's going to be new outcomes and it's going to be fantastic. Thanks a lot. That's all for and me for the moment. Deinab is here as well. Deinab is here. Lovely. Really? Bye. Take care. <laughs> Thank you, Helena. Thank, Thank you too, Vance. Zainab, feel free. I've given you right. Feel free to share your experiences. Zaina is special. She has been with us for two Hi, years. Hi, everyone. Right now, and she's our, you know, <laughs> wonderful uh, start. <laughs> Thank you so much for this wonderful team. Thank you, thank you all. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't participate in the, uh, in the classes because uh, because of my internet. But the moderators were very useful, and uh, they uh, they taught me all the things step by step again. And thank you for that. Thank you so much. I think you have uh, in 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 the site, uh, Heike, you have a uh, Zaina's work. You, maybe you can show it, share the screen and show her work. Well, I, I, uh, we get we still have six minutes. So if you have any questions, please feel free now that we are uh, here. Um, in virtual worlds right now, and there is going to be a, a big conference that is called Virtual World Best Practices in Education. And it's happening on the 31st, from the 31st of March to the 1st of April, no, 20, the 2nd of April. And there you will have the chance to contact and, and network with a lot of educators and from different uh, virtual uh, platforms, VR and virtual world. So you are all invited to come. Zaina, do you want to say a little bit about your beautiful build? Look, it, it really, the building, and it shines at night. We had to... Yes. <laughs> uh, we made a carpet gallery. Um, Helena helped me how to uh, add the objects to the gallery and how to, um, how to make the building, because I didn't know anything. Uh, I couldn't attend the, uh, the class, but... Uh, um, two times uh, during one day, um, she helped me. Um, she was very patient, and she helped me how to make a building, how to uh, add the pictures, uh, how to uh, change the textures, and how to resize uh, the objects. And it was a wonderful experience for me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Helena. Thank you. Any more questions from the audience? Can I ask you a question, the audience, if you could? <laughs> you know of any 3D building spaces that we can explore next year <laughs> that we should go into to uh, learn how to build there and how to make the environment and shape the environment the way we do? Minecraft of visit being such a beautiful 3D environment to work and, and create in. Engage. <laughs> I discovered that yesterday. It is wow. <laughs> it is really, really nice. Huh? Engage. Good Engage. Point you saying it because for the virtual world best practice in education, Amani Al Khahat who is in New York, and she has been a moderator of our EVO session. 
she presented to us all space VR. Um, but this evening at that's 2 p.m. San Francisco time, and that's uh, 5 p.m. New York time, and that's uh, 11, 11 o 10 o'clock in, in Europe. And she will take everyone through, an, it's called an immersive experience for the virtual world best practice. Uh, virtual world best practice and education conference which takes place next week and the immersive experiences are one week ahead of the conference and she will take us into engage i rehearsed it with her yesterday engage vr which is fantastic it's not free though or very limited free version of engage but it's stunning, beautiful VR environment. I can. And something that, that you can, you know, something that is really important is that you get used to all these worlds, you know, because this is where conferences and training is going to be happening. So this is a lot of digital literacy, you know, just to go, uh, uh, maybe you think, oh, this is too complicated. I cannot use that in the classroom. But it is good to know about it. And when the time is right, then you will be ready for that. That's my story with uh, when I discovered virtual worlds. I didn't have a computer or connection or the knowledge. And, uh, but I started attending conferences and, and, and Evo has been uh, very important for this. Evo was the one that opened, uh, Evo Village was the one that opened our um, my interest for virtual worlds and I've been there since then. So this is something that you can do by visiting the different places and then, you know, pick and choose and you get confident and one day you're hold, you're having your classes too and bring in your students. Yeah, Roblox is also very popular for games. Yes, and, and yeah, because it's, um, when we talk about metaverse, um, so second life and then I, I was surprised that Minecraft and Roblox is also mentioned as one of the uh, put most potential platforms for, for that as well. Um, with Roblox Studio, kids are, are able to create their own um, game in, you know, in the 3D world. Um, so These are called sandboxes. Okay, yeah. In a sandbox, you go build and create. That's why these uh, games are wonderful. I mean, these platforms are wonderful for students. Can I, can I uh, thank everyone for the, being here at this session and tell Jane, please enjoy Pittsburgh. Let us know what's happening oh, in Pittsburgh. Please, thank you. everybody turn off your camera so we can take a picture. Please, Sorry. everybody. Please, please turn off your cameras so we can take a picture. Yes, a little zoom zoom turn off your cameras, turn off your cameras and, uh, if you're there. Thanks to Carl for like putting this peace. hybrid. Hey, let's talk about peace. Yes, together. peace, people. <laughs> Many thanks to Carl is computer yes. system. Could learning. you could you do yes. something like this? Or we like you know we support Ukrainian and peace uh -huh. in the world and things something like that. Okay, <laughs> okay. One, two, three. Say cheese. Peace. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely to see you all. <laughs>